Good morning, everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. My name is Fabian Levy, and I serve as Deputy Mayor for Communications for the City of New York. We appreciate everyone joining us today for the first in-person media availability of 2024. While the year, year may be different, our priorities remain the same, protecting the public, growing our economy, and delivering for working people every day. These efforts take all of us, which is why the mayor has once again convened senior leadership here at City Hall to answer your questions, address issues, and provide New Yorkers with crucial information about the work of their city government. So joining us today, we have Mayor Eric Adams, First Deputy Mayor Sheena Wright, Chief Advisor to the Mayor Ingrid Lewis Martin, Chief of Staff uh, Camille Joseph Varlick, Deputy Mayor for Operations Mayor Joshi, Deputy Mayor for Housing, Economic Development, and Workforce Maria Torres Springer, Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services Ann Williams Isom, Deputy Mayor for Strategic Initiatives, Anna Almanzar, and Chief Counsel, Lisa Zornberg. So without further delay, I'm pleased to turn it over to Mayor Adams. Thanks, thanks so much, and thanks to all of you. Uh, and Happy New Year's uh, to all of you, 2024. Uh, New Year really was exciting to be in Times Square. There was so much energy uh, in Times Square, and it's sort of hard to believe that in uh, 2022, when I took office, uh, we had the fourth lowest tourism in, uh, in over 20-something years. And last year, 2023, we had the fourth highest tourism in history of over 60 million people visited. And every time I went to Times Square, I walked the streets, you see a different energy out there, the excitement when you add it uh, to the fact that uh, people come to this city because we're the safest big city in America. Crime is down, jobs are up. Uh, that's what I ran on, and that's what I was committed to do every day. And the byproduct of a safe city uh, is not only tourism, is that people are once again enjoying all that the city has to offer. <clears throat> In 2023, <clears throat> uh, overall crime went down. We saw a drop in five of the seven major crime categories, including a 12% decline in homicides and 25% decrease in shootings. And also in 2023, uh, we saw something that is very dear to me. Many of you may not be aware of it, but I don't like rats. And we saw uh, rat complaints go down, uh, trash set out on the street uh, for less time. And we got on track to put garbage in containers, 100% of the city's garbage. And we want to get uh, black garbage bags off the streets of the city. And we have the... Uh, uh, the right movement, right direction, and right team with our rat czar and uh, Commissioner uh, Tish, who's really focused. People told me it was going to take uh, four years to do. Uh, we're doing it in a little over two years, and I'm really excited about it because it's a change of the game on the landscape of, of, our, of our city. Uh, we plan to continue making our city cleaner and safer in 2024. And really want to thank uh, NYPD, uh, FDNY, DOT, Department of uh, uh, DOT, DOT the, our subway system. If you really want to see the coordination, you could have hundreds of thousands of people at Times Square. And within hours, the place was not only clean, but safe. There were so many questions about how are you going to manage any form of protest or any form of disruption. We saw what happened. NYPD came with a real plan, executed that plan, and people felt safe being out celebrating uh, the coming in of the new year. Uh, our first responders spent days prepared, and they did the right thing in the right time and executed a, a great plan. And it's about executing plans. Subway crime is down. Subway safety plan. Uh, dealing with uh, encampments on our streets, our encampment plan. Uh, dealing with public safety, even the uh, putting in place our anti-gun unit. Shootings are down. Each time you put in plan, coordinate, and execute, we're seeing the results that we stated we were looking for. So I'm excited about 2024. Uh, I said 2023 was going to be my Aaron Judge year, and the darn sure was we hit it out the park. There was a number of records that we were able to break, and now I'm looking towards uh, 2024. I don't know if I'm going to do a Curry, Steph Curry, or LeBron James. I haven't figured it out yet, but it's going to be a real year to win, win some real championship for the people of this city. So why don't we open it up, you know? So, so, Mr. Mayor, how are you executing the plan now that uh, migrants are coming in by train and trying to circumvent uh, your, your bus order? 
And number two, how will you execute the plan to eject the vendors from uh, the bridge? Great. Okay, great, great, uh, great to that. Uh, first, we what Governor Abbott has done in his total reckless disregard for using people as pawns. Uh, he has shifted and it just wants to create chaos. And we can't be so stagnant that we don't respond to his shift. And that is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to be extremely uh, calculative in how we do it, utilize our manpower resources, utilize our, uh, our executive order's powers uh, to not just be stagnant. We put out an executive order. If he's shifting, we're going to shift. And that is what uh, the Corp Council and uh, the City Hall's Council, uh, really, uh, uh, Lisa has been amazing and thinking one step ahead. And we coordinated and communicated with the municipalities in the area, and they should all do the same, EO. They should look at everyone that has that train line that leads into the city, everyone that has the municipalities around us. They should do the same, EO. This is what we learned from Chicago. He tried it in Chicago also. We're dealing with a person who just wants to disrupt. This is not about raising the attention on an issue. This is a mean-spirited way of using people and disrupting uh, municipalities, uh, not only in this region and in other parts of the entire, in the, in the entire country. And so we're going to pivot and shift and be prepared to send the right message to these bus operators. You should not participate in the actions of Governor uh, Abbott. Uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. You have a photo of that Brooklyn Bridge? I can get it. So you can keep talking. People, it, 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 I, I was driving across the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, I think it was Saturday, and I called Fabian. I said, can you get a photographer out here to take a picture of this bridge? People couldn't walk. It's not only a sanitary, sanitary issue. It's a public safety issue. People were jumping over the bridge onto the bike path <laughs> because we came to a blockage. And so I'm not quite understanding those that uh, are not clear that you can't have a bridge lined up on both sides with vendors selling all sorts of items, and it created this bottleneck. So if you needed an, an emergency egress to get off the bridge, you, people would have trampled over each other. We need order in the city. Um, that is one of our major landmarks. And, uh, uh, Mary, you can go into what our initiative, what we have started. Uh, we're, we're going to clear that bridge of vendors. Now, if other electeds decide they want to counteract what we want to do, we can only do what we do. So if they're, if they're still there tomorrow, right? They're not until tonight, I understand. So if they're still there tomorrow, like, are you physically picking up their stuff and moving it out? Like, Hold on for one moment, because I want to get this clear. This is a very important point that we need to understand in the city. NYPD locks up people. The other parts of the criminal justice system on serious crimes, they determine if they're going to stay in. We're going to clean up the bridge. If other forms of our legislative body decides we don't want the bridge cleaned up, we can only do what's in our power. And I'm saying to New Yorkers that the policies that are being implemented by some, a small numerical minority of electors in the city, they are implementing policies that have been implemented in other cities, and we are witnessing the just dismantling of public safety in those cities. We have been successful in here in holding back some of those policies, but the policies that are being implemented of public urination, public injection of drugs, vendors everywhere, a crime. We've been fighting back this administration. But if we're saying that we want our city to go down the route of other cities, there's not much we can do. We're going we're gonna to confine with the law. But our, New Yorkers need to be clear. Look at other cities. And we need to ask ourselves, is this what we want for our city? And I say no to that. And I think the overwhelming of New Yorkers embrace my belief that 
We don't want our cities to look like some of the other cities and the policies that were put in place to create that environment. And the vendor in on our bridge is a symbol of the type of policies that people are trying to implement. Uh, go ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I just want to follow up and highlight um, what the mayor was talking about around safety. The Brooklyn Bridge is a major pedestrian thoroughfare. New York City is back. People want to be in public space. They celebrate the public space. It's where communities are made. It's part of our social economy. In 2021, on an average weekday, we'd have about 17,000 pedestrians cross that bridge. By 2022, that had gone up to 34,000, and the numbers continue to rise. This is something that's extremely positive and is a real sign of life in New York City. But it's also a safety concern. At its widest point, that bridge is 16 feet. At its narrowest, it's five feet. It's crowded on a regular day. If there's an emergency, it's a life-threatening experience. Yeah. And so we have to make sure that our major pedestrian thoroughfares are there for pedestrians so that the public can use them, so they're there for the greater good. And we are certainly understanding that some people have been vending on that bridge for a while. We flyered. We let them know the rules were initially published in October. There was a lot of press, thanks to many people in this room, about the current conditions and what the rulemaking would do. And it's been several months we've gone through the administrative rulemaking process. Flyers went out. Uh, DOT will be holding property if it's left on the bridge at a safe and convenient location so people can come by and pick it up. And it's absolutely about education, showing people where they can vend legally in the city and there are many streets in the city where people can vend legally and making sure that they understand this transition is happening and we will not tolerate disobedience but we certainly are not going to be um, surprising anyone in terms of the fact that the transition's happening and we will help you accommodate you getting your stuff off the bridge but we're not going to tolerate continued uh, vending on the bridge after the rule goes into effect. And I think New Yorkers are going to really appreciate the change. They're going to appreciate being able to walk across that bridge, have the freedom to move freely. Uh, you know, I was joking early, literally stretch their arms out because there is space, finally. And it is really one of the most um, iconic and beautiful structures in the city. And it's time for us to be able to celebrate it and see it for what it is. And, and Julia, you know, I, I just cannot emphasize enough that the overwhelming number of New Yorkers, they want clean streets, uh, they want an organized city. There's a small number of people, they want to legalize prostitution, uh, they, you know, think it's all right for someone to put a camp in front of your house, they think it's okay for people to deal with serious mental health illness and they should be allowed to stay on the streets although they need they can't take care of themselves there's just a philosophical difference in this city that i said it a few weeks ago and i'm gonna say it again the overwhelming number of new yorkers want an organized clean street and not any and everything goes uh when we went to clean up the the uh, plaza on roosevelt island where you saw brothels, you saw prostitution, you saw people selling food under pigeon droppings. We went out there to clean it up. There was a small number of electors that were saying, no, leave it alone, you know? Uh, it, that's not, uh, this city is too diverse, too complicated, and too many different ways of life for us not to have clear directions on what we expect from our neighbors and what we expect from our uh, the, the residents of the city. And that's the clarity I'm going to represent. You know, I can do it within my power. We are going to, and some people are going to, a small number of people are going to, are going to push back, you know, and but we're going to push hard to fight for this city to be a city that's orderly run. We shouldn't have mopeds driving up and down the blocks going up one-way streets, driving on sidewalks. I mean, you look at these quality of life issues that we are fighting for. Uh, people, a small number of people are trying to fight to not stabilize this amazing city that we have. And I'm just not going to surrender uh, to the loudest. The loudest is not the majority. I, the photos that I was just showing, we'll send it around as well. And I just want to show this one video 
that we saw on Twitter. Yep. Just one. There's four here. Hold on, I'm just getting it up. Look at the danger of this. Someone literally climbing up on a barrier and then jumping off from the pedestrian walkway onto a bike pathway. We'll send around this tweet. This is just a public tweet. Yes, we'll send Imagine around. someone yells a fire. Someone hear a car backs fire and think it's a shot. You have a stampede on that bridge. You know, idealism can't collide with realism. You know, just throwing out these policies without understanding how would it impact public safety. I have to think that through. Mr. Mayor, I know that you signed an executive order to keep the buses from coming into New York City. I know that you've asked people in the surrounding communities to sign similar executive orders, which they have not done. But people are still being let off in New Jersey communities and coming into the city. Have you thought about the idea of sending NYPD police officers to stop the buses from letting people off at these places in New Jersey, at the train stations, to keep them from coming into New York? Uh, and Lisa, can you go into yeah. what our strategies around that? But we are going to um, really uh, make sure we utilize all of the resources we have within uh, the law. We're not going to do anything that's against, you know, goes against the law. But we have done a great job of communicating with the municipalities around us. I, I got a call I'm going to do with the governor of uh, New Jersey, who, who is just has been a real partner with us. Uh, and we want to continue to utilize all resources that we have. Uh, Lisa, you want to go into some yeah. of our strategies? First, first, just one correction. Uh, the town of... You bet. I've never been accused of speaking too <laughs> low, so that's great. Um, the town of Clarkston, just for clarification, Clarkstown, Clarkstown uh, did issue an EO. That's uh, in the county of Rockland County. So um, whether the town supervisor there knows it or not, he joined the city's coalition, and the city has has in fact called uh, upon and encouraged all surrounding counties in uh, New York, New Jersey, elsewhere to issue similar EOs to what New York City has done. So we may be seeing others after the new year uh, coming out of other locations. Uh, what's what's happening right now is 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 bonkers. It is really what Texas is doing is bonkers. Uh, it is um, financing a state uh, operation to send hundreds and thousands of um, migrant individuals, recent arrivals to the United States, uh, to New York City. It's the, the mayor, uh, rather the governor of Texas has proudly broadcast tens of thousands. He will not stop until national immigration policy is changed. Uh, will Texas coordinate in telling us when buses are departing or arriving? No. Um, particularly since September 2023, they have tried to shut off communication so that we have ghost buses, buses that are arriving en masse any time of day, any time of night, on the weekends when we are least able as a city to staff and meet any emergent needs of people coming off the buses. So New York City responded uh, similar to what Chicago did, very commonsensical, law and order for to help us manage this humanitarian crisis, executive order, give us 32 hours advance notification. Tell us that the bus is coming into New York City. Let us know how many children do you have on board? How many adults, families do you have on board? Um, since we issued that executive order, not one bus from Texas has complied. Not one. There is a the, the strategy which we believe is being directed by the state of Texas is purposely to try to evade the executive order. And now what you're seeing is the same buses from Texas paid for by the state of Texas that were previously dropping off at Port Authority are now dropping off at train stations in New Jersey, at Trenton, at Secaucus. Uh, other places in Jersey and are under and reportedly providing tickets, one way tickets from those train stations to come into Penn Station. So as we're going to, as the mayor said, we're going to, we're going to explore every possible option 
But just to be clear, we're gonna our goal is is not to hold any of this chaotic tactic against the the migrants who are arriving. We're gonna continue to be decent and humanitarian. This is a humanitarian crisis. Uh, but to get to be able to manage this crisis, we we just we have to do everything we possibly can. And the bus companies themselves really need to take notice that they are exposing themselves if they purposely seek to evade this executive order and harm New York City by participating in what really is a bad faith plan at this point to hoist thousands of vulnerable individuals. Uh, you know, onto buses, on trains, to bring them to a city without any coordination whatsoever. I want to make sure I understand this. Basically what you're saying is that you are going to explore the possibility of using NYPD police officers <laughs> to stop people from coming into, in New Jersey from coming into New York. And I use this term often, uh, everything is on the table that is in conformity with the law. Uh, I am, we're dealing with a bully right now, and everything is on the table that conforms with the law. Our legal team at Corp Council and uh, my special counsel here, uh, they have spent the entire holiday weekend looking at every option that is available to us. Can NYPD officers go to New Jersey and, and get New Jersey police officers to help them? to stop the buses from coming in. What's legal? You talk about what are the options. What are the options? That's what, we, that's what we're exploring. This is, this, is, this is new territory, and we are looking um, over every authority that we have and really have to commend uh, my special counsel and the corp counsel. Uh, they are looking over every authority we have because we're dealing with an unprecedented situation of a person that's trying to destabilize cities, Chicago, uh, uh, well as Denver, New York City, uh, Massachusetts. And so this is unprecedented. And what I'm pleased about uh, that our voice was a single voice uh, in 22, and now you know there's a chorus that's building that people are realizing uh, that this administration, we're doing the right thing, uh, but they're realizing that you know you can't ignore this problem. This is a this is a real problem, and the governor of Texas continues continuously state that well you guys are a sanctuary city, you know that has nothing to do with this. These people are paroled into the country; they're legally here, and being a sanctuary city is has nothing to do with this at all. These are people who are paroled in, uh, into the country, and while they're here. Uh, we are obligated by what the city has pushed. And that's why we're in court now to say that the right to shelter should not have an impact on this migrant crisis. It's like a bizarre case of, of, of poker, where you say, I'm going to issue an executive order that's going to prevent only have buses coming in at a certain time. And he says, I'll see that, but that bid, and now I'm going to send him to New Jersey. I mean, how did it keeps going? Yeah, you, 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 you do until he throws in his hand. We're going to win because we're on the side of right. We're on the side of right uh, that human beings should not be treated in an inhumane manner. And so he's not on the side of right. Our country has always been a country of immigrants, a country of rules and regulations, and we will utilize those rules and regulations to stop what he's doing to cities in America. New York is a city where we fight bullies, and others are joining us. And this cries out, this cries out again for a federal response. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's high time that the federal government step in with a national decompression strategy. I gotta just, uh, let me just jump in one thing. One thing that you just said, Marsha, about it's like this game of poker, it's going back and forth. The mayor always talks about, and this is what I, every time someone asks me about this, this is what I think about. The mayor always talks about his love for Madam Secretary. Uh, <laughs> I like comic book movies, and Dark Knight is one, this line that always comes to my mind when I think about Greg Abbott. Alfred is talking to Bruce Wayne about the Joker and his evil tactics, and there's a line in it that some men can't be reasoned with or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Greg Abbott is that man. Mm. He can't be reasoned with. He can't be negotiated with. He just wants to watch this country burn. 
in the same form of Marsha's questions, I wanted to ask about the executive order. It seems to be backfiring and not going the way you wanted. Instead of coordination, it seems to be getting more chaotic. Is there any thought that maybe the executive order could have been written differently? I'm also wondering the communication with these New Jersey uh, municipalities, what does that look like? What is their understanding of how the executive order works? And what type of prior communication you had with them before the order went into effect? And then separately, can you talk about the, the earthquake that happened in Queens earlier today? Any information you can give us about that? Yes, no, the, the, uh, uh, the executive order is not backfiring. Uh, we spoke with our colleagues in in Chicago who told us that this is what uh, Governor Abbott did in Chicago. <clears throat> he started dropping people miles away and telling them that you are in Chicago proper. Uh, and so we are continually anticipating the move of, of his actions. And what I am really excited about is that we are not willing to be just stationary. If we have to change the EO, we will change the EO. If we have to alter the EO, we have to alter the EO. Because this is who we're dealing with right now. We're looking at a person who is focused on disruption. And if we don't uh, address it based on his goal, we have to be clear on his goal. His goal is to disrupt. And so these, the EO is only the first level that we're going to continue to modify, ship procedures, processes to really push back on what Governor Abbott is doing. Uh, we talk about the, the, the earthquake. I didn't feel it. Um, you know. I think what we generally know is we thought that there, there was an explosion on Randall's Island, but it turns out that it was a, an earthquake probably along the lines of 1.7, and so we're waiting to get additional information. Roosevelt. 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 Roosevelt Island, not Randall's Island, just to be clear. Thank you. So there wasn't an explosion then? No. 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 Correct. Yep. Good morning, yesterday, and happy new year to the team. Uh, I was going to ask a uh, question along the same lines as Marsha, uh, because like two Saturdays ago, I hosted an end of the year gala for the reset talk show, mm -hmm. and the, the big talking point was um, about the migrant crisis. And uh, a few people stated, listen, if the, if the mayor at least try to push back one bus, it'll make us feel better. And, and then it's reported that there's this executive order. So um, I'm, I'm glad you could uh, expound on that a little bit, simply because it'll make some of the New Yorkers feel better if they know that you're fighting for them. And my second question is uh, the minimum wage. Uh, it's a new law. Is it across New York City? Yeah, the, uh, uh, Maria, and going to the minimum wage, but uh, listen, I am blown away at some of the most intelligent New Yorkers in the city. When I, uh, when I'm moving around the city, I say this over and over again, who are not aware that we can't stop the buses from coming in, who are not aware we do, we do not have deportation status, who are not aware that we cannot turn those who commit crimes over to ICE. They're just rules that everyday New Yorkers are not aware of. And uh, we need to really continue in 2024 educating New Yorkers on the fact that over 57% of those who came in, we were able to self-sustain. That uh, we have been educating the countless number of children, that we are operating within the restrictions of not only federal law, but city and state law. So we were dealt a hand, using Marsha's poker, analogy, poker analogy, we were dealt a hand, and we played the hell out of that hand. What this administration has done, uh, international and national leaders have looked at it and said, it's amazing what you, what you have done in this administration. And so this is the hand we were dealt, and everyday New Yorkers who are, who are struggling to make ends meet, they're not weeding through all the layers. All they know is we have a mayor and we have a migrant crisis and the mayor did not fix that migrant crisis. We have to show them that the national government has dropped this into our lap. Min Min Hull, um, um, let, let uh, Deputy Mayor Maria Torres sure, spring Sure, on your second question. Thanks for that. And Happy New Year to everyone in the room. Um, so the minimum wage did increase as of 
January 1st from $15 to $16. That's obviously really good news for New Yorkers, more money in the pockets of um, workers, and I think in many ways part of um, what has been a concerted effort from day one of this administration um, to make sure not only do we grow jobs in New York, and if anyone followed the job numbers from last month, we are now at uh, 4.132 uh, million um, private sector jobs. That is the most number of private sector jobs in the city's history. Uh, but part of that work in terms of our economic recovery isn't just the number of jobs, um, but also making sure um, of the quality of jobs and the increase in wages. And so the increase of the minimum wage is a good thing. Um, it really complements um, other efforts like all the work that we have done, for example, for um, app-based delivery workers to make sure that they are now earning um, a more sustainable wage, all of the work in terms of free tax prep, um, all of the work in terms of consumer protection, really um, a, um, a panoply of different tools to make sure that we're getting uh, money into the hands of New Yorkers, and that will continue um, in this year so that we um, not only increase jobs, but really um, increase opportunity for families across the five boroughs. Crime is down, jobs are up, tourists are back. That's what I ran on. <laughs> Mayor, you've said you want all these other municipalities to do their own EO. Yes. You also said to a couple folks that the idea of outsmarting Abbott is that eventually he'll fold his hand. But until and unless those other two things happen, the net effect of your EO so far is that the migrants who are coming here have a longer journey. They're on a bus, they get off in Secaucus, now they have to take a train as well. You said at the outset that it wasn't your intention to punish the asylum seekers. But right now, isn't that what's happening? No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I think there's a process to get into an end result. Uh, the first order of business was to demand a coordination with Governor Abbott and the bus companies. Demand these bus companies comply. That's the first line. We're saying if you're coming into our city, you're going to comply with these rules. Clarity is the key. Now we get our, <coughs> our other municipalities to put in place the same order, clarity, if you're coming here, coordination. That's all we're asking. We're not stating that if a migrant or asylum seeker comes here, we're not going to do what we have done uh, for this period of time. But we, uh, we must lay down the rules of if you come to our city, this is what's expected of you. And I keep saying this over and over again on everything we do in this city. New York City is a place of rules. It's a place of uh, law and order, not unlawfulness and disorder. And this is no different. We're saying that if you come to our city, you're a bus operator, this is what you must comply with. And if you try to go to other municipalities outside of our region, we want them to join us like they're doing in Chicago. Governor Murphy, is that today? And are you asking him to maybe do some kind of statewide EO that would obviate the need to go to every single municipality? Uh, the team, uh, Tiffany Raspberry, our IGA, she's reaching out to the governor's office, and we're seeing how we could collaborate together, because we don't want to spill over into another part of the, the city or our neighboring states. And so we think there's a real room for collaboration, like we've done with uh, the other uh, cities. You know, our goal was very clear. We want to build... Uh, a coalition of mayors and governors, uh, like the Massachusetts governor has been strong on this issue. That's our goal. And I'm going down uh, to uh, the uh, associations of, of, of mayors, and we're going to raise it as well. We all need to be responding uh, to this. And I think that we're making a big mistake that we are we're looking at the sink that's overflowing and not to force it. The national government needs to fix this problem. We got 3,000 migrants asylums last week. 3,000. The national government must fix this problem. And that's, you know, I'm surprised our attention is not on the fact that this should not be happening to New York City, Chicago, Denver, Houston, El Paso, Brownsville, Texas. This should not be happening to cities. And I'm clear on that. It's not about just New York. No city should be going through this, and it's not sustainable. Happy New 
you here, Mr. Mayor and everyone else. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. Um, so I just wanted to ask you a question about something you said last week, something yes. you said um, this morning um, on our air on Fox 5, and something that you said just a few moments ago. Yes. Um, you said that migrants are responsible for some crime here in the city. So I just want to be very clear. Do you believe that migrants are committing crime here in the city, and what data are you using to back that up? Do I do I believe that there are some migrants who are committing crimes in the city? Yes, yes. Um, there are people who are committing crimes in all walks of life. Um, it's not just migrants and asylum seekers. Um, I think that we have a number of migrants who have committed crimes. Uh, we have a number of non-migrants who are committing crimes, and so I do not want to walk away with anyone saying. Uh, that the GLA increase we saw in the city was just migrants. No, it's not. It was long-term New Yorkers who committed GLAs also. But are there some crimes that migrants have committed? Yes, they, they are. But remember what I said last week. You place a person in an environment where they can't work, can't provide for themselves, they have to just sit around all day, that's not a good scenario. <laughs> That's not a good scenario, and that is what we need to focus on. What environment are we creating in these cities? And what data are you using to back that up? What data, like what data points? Well, if, I, if, if, if I, um, there was, a, there was a, a robbery pattern, for instance, that uh, when we looked at it, we identified that robbery pattern. Um, there were um, some migrants that participated in that robbery pattern. You know, every robbery pattern we have in the city is not is not done by migrants. But we identified that this was a robbery pattern, and there were migrants who participated in that robbery pattern. Happy New Year. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm good. Um, <clears throat> so I had a couple of questions. The first one has to do with um, sanctuary city status. You talked about this a bit uh, earlier today. And you said something to the effect that the law isn't being used the way it was intended. So um, this is on uh, with Rosanna Scott, I, I believe. Um, so from your point of view, what could you clarify that? Like, how was it intended to be used from your perspective? How should it be used? And do you feel, <coughs> excuse me, that it's time that um, the, the sanctuary city law in the city be suspended. So that's the first one. The second one, real quick, is... Can you repeat that question, Mike? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I know what he, he the whole, said, but I, I got Should it, it be suspended? I got, I got okay. So um, the second one has to do with, I was out on break for this, but Phil Banks was, I think, referring to clown hour, clown time, clown, something with clowns came up while I was away. Um, I want to ask you, I mean, it seemed a bit ad hominem to me. Um, I'm sorry, you guys have any It was just like an attack against like a person, kind of, rather than kind of like a disagreement over the thing, right? So, um, you know, is that, do you feel like that, that sort of thing is appropriate, like that kind of decorum? And, and do you feel like there's some onus on the administration to, to kind of, foster a decorum that, that's not along those lines. No, no, and I think that's, that's, that is a, a great point that you, that you raised. Uh, first, let me deal with, I was talking about uh, right to shelter. If I said sanctuary city, I want to be clear. I'm talking about right to shelter. We don't believe right to shelter should apply to a humanitarian crisis. That's what we believe, and we're in court right now clearly articulating that, the forefathers, forefathers and four uh, women, uh, mothers of that law did not think that one day we were going to talk about 160-something thousand people showing up at our door. That is what I believe we need to modify. And so if I use the term um, a sanctuary sh city, that's not what I was talking about. I was talking about right to shelter. Can I, can I just uh, jump yes. in there to, to provide what I think is a purposeful mixing up of terms sometimes that you see, for example, from Governor Abbott and others. When, when Governor Abbott tweets out that he's going to direct busloads or planes with asylum seekers to sanctuary cities, uh, let's be clear just for a moment. He, I think he's trying to confuse that with right to shelter. 
So, you know, in New York City, uh, we have the Callahan decree that we're in court about, which provides, put, imposes certain obligations under a decree. Chicago, as far as I know, Illinois, has no right to shelter. Denver, uh, as far as I'm aware, has no right to shelter. So you have a situation, I think there's an intentional conflating of terms, but when we talk about chaos and, and we talk about humanity, <coughs> let's be clear, um, the state of Texas is purposefully sending thousands of uh, migrants to cold locations who have no system or legal requirement uh, to provide a, a right to shelter. Uh, and I, I, just, I just think that we should be clear about what the terminology is. And uh, responding to, um, listen, we should always show the proper decorum, the proper communication. We should not be mean-spirited on what we do. And I know it's hard for many people who are sitting in the seats where you are to clearly identify that some of you have been very mean to this administration. Uh, some of you have uh, distorted what we said. There are days that I will leave press conferences and I will ask myself, well, we all at the same press conference? And so uh, there are some people in the administration <clears throat> who have been uh, fighting on behalf of New Yorkers. Uh, they express themselves. Uh, and I think that some of the meetings that we've had where people just look at the comparisons of what we have done uh, and they walk away of saying, like, what is the mission here? What are we attempting to do? What are we, what, what are we trying to display? How do you walk away after two years of me being in office and not realizing how I manage this city? I mean, how do you not see? I ran on bringing down crime. Crime is down. I ran on returning our economy. The economy has returned. More private sector jobs in the history of this city. Education. 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 Our education numbers outpacing uh, the state. Of uh, Tourism. You know, fourth highest in history. You know, I mean, so when you get someone like a Phil and many of our others, I think the patience that this team has has shown of just the unwillingness to say, okay, let's critique this administration. But darn it, part of that that critique should be that they inherit COVID. They inherited 165,000 migrants, a, a city larger than Albany. And in spite of that, our numbers on housing, our numbers on um, jobs. Um, jobs, earn income tax credit, getting stuff done in Albany, uh, you know, so when you get a, a response like that, no matter who we are, we're still human beings. And people respond differently of, you know, how people uh, treat them. So I don't know if the decorum has been, you know, 100% even on the side of, um, you know, who's reporting this administration. I remember the story that you did when you talked about the fact that um, we, the, the, what do you call that list, the DMO list? You didn't even mention that the other elected officials were on that list. It's like you guys are conveniently, conveniently, you conveniently, conveniently, oh, okay, I'm sorry, you did the story? Okay, okay, my apologies to you. But you but your paper conveniently missed that other electors on that on that on that uh, list. And so it's it's as though it's as though I'm trying to figure out the goal. Sometimes we sit down and we talk and we're like, what's the goal here? What's the goal? Is the goal to say that my administration is incompetent when all the data shows not only are we competent, but we have Weathered the storm that what other administration has gone through this? And we have weathered the storm. And look at my other cities, my, my other colleagues. When I speak to my other mayors, they say, Eric, how the heck are you guys doing this? But you, you pick up the dailies, and you would not think that. You would think from picking up the dailies, that this is a group of, uh, uh, of people that are not doing the job and we're, and we're, and we're doing the job. So um, we need to have decorum. And that's something that I believe in. I joke and, and, and kid with you guys. I don't have, there's nothing personal here. Uh, you know, our job is to be critiqued, but I know this administration is doing a great job. 
under difficult circumstances. Um, Mayor Adams, Happy New Year to you and the team. Mm -hmm. Have you? Happy New Year. Thank you. Have you considered a push to reverse sanctuary status? I'm sorry? Have you considered a push to reverse sanctuary status, or do you believe in the tenants of, of that? Sanctuary city status? No, no, because this is not the case here. These people are paroled into um, the city. They don't fall under sanctuary city status. Do you have anything else for those who seek to come to the city, though? I don't think... I, I don't, when I went down to the Darien Gap, uh, it was clear to me the desire the of uh, people coming to America the um, propaganda that's being used, you know, uh, one of our colleagues was saying that they were on a, tr on a plane coming from Arizona and almost 80% of the people on the plane were, uh, were uh, migrants and asylum seekers, you know, taking pictures of themselves saying, you know, we, we're here in America. And so I don't know if that's the answer. The answer is for our national government to resolve this issue. That's the answer, uh, you know, Tinkering around the edges, you know, is not going to, I believe, is going to do the job. Happy New Year, Mr. Mayor and everyone. Um, Mr. Mayor, I want to pivot to education and to this upcoming legislative session. So first question on education is, uh, do you, are you planning on seeking any changes to that unfunded class size mandate law? Um, because it's it's already starting to have an impact and a very negative impact, and it's unfunded. And then my second question, Mr. Mayor, with regards to mayoral control, um, what are you seeking uh, with renewing mayoral control? And are there any other changes to the current governance system uh, that we have that you are seeking? Perhaps changing the number of members. It's a bit unwieldy right now. And then last but not least, what are your legislative priorities, your other legislative priorities for this session? Yeah, I met with um, the team, uh, Tiffany Raspberry, uh, Ingrid, uh, Diane Savino, former state senator. We had a conversation over the last few days about focusing and zeroing in on that. Uh, number one, uh, mayoral control. Uh, I want the same thing that my former mayors had. Uh, you know, we have two public school uh, we have a public school mayor and a public school chancellor. Uh, we understand the importance of equality of education, and both of us had two different experiences. And so I would like the same thing they had. They, they were allowed to turn around the school system. We're seeing some real uh, productivity <laughs> in uh, the Department of Education, everything from giving our children quality food um, to what we've done with Summer Rising to uh, the test scores outpacing the state. Uh, so we're seeing some real W's. I think give us the opportunity uh, to continue like we, we, we gave to um, other mayors. Uh, second, cannabis uh, um, enforcement. It needs to be localized. We need to be able to close down these cannabis shops. I stated if I'm given the enforcement opportunity, uh, we will close down these shops in 30 days. Uh, they're making a mockery of the process, and we need to make sure that we close them down. Uh, housing. Everyone talks about, you know, the need of housing. Uh, yet we got nothing out of Albany last year in housing. Uh, that just can't happen. We have to deal with the inventory issue that we're facing. We're doing our part here with uh, Dan Garotnik and Deputy Mayor Maria Torres Springer. Uh, we're going to do our part, and we're going to push through, but we need uh, help in, uh, in this issue around housing. And then migrants and asylum seekers. Uh, we need of uh, the support on the state level uh, to make sure that we can manage this crisis that's impacting the economic engine of the state, which is New York City. Of uh, You know, if you look at the four huge areas, those are huge areas for us. And as you said, with the class size uh, manner, I, I think that the ideal of that legislation gets in the way of the real of making sure we're not taking resources from those schools uh, that are in greater need. And that's going to be part of our agenda when we go to Albany. Oh. Hi, Mayor Adams. How are you? I'm great. Happy New Year. I wanted to ask you, I know you'd mentioned previously you planned to go down to D.C., um, taking some faith leaders with you. I want to know when you do plan to visit D.C. next. And my second question, I guess sort of related to what other people had asked, when you announced this executive order, did you not foresee that people would kind of circumvent the rule? And have you been in conversations with and you said you're kind of anything's on the table, but uh, were you surprised? I don't know if um, 
at least some of our ones answer, but were you surprised to know, because I think even hearing the executive order, the, the thought is, okay, they're just not gonna come into the city, they're gonna find other ways. So I don't know what your initial reaction was. Of, of first DC, uh, I'm going to DC, I think on the 17th or 18th to meet with um, uh, the, Ameri the mayors across the country, because uh, I want them to get more engaged in this. And we learned about the layers of, <coughs> of doing this from uh, Mayor Johnson in Chicago. And he stated that they started, uh, after he put in his EO, they started uh, you know, dropping off outside. And so we knew there was gonna be layers and we're going to continue to respond based on the layers. Because when, you know, this is a, you know, this is a, a, a diabolical plan by this governor and we're gonna have to respond based on what he's doing. And we did have communications with our other municipalities in the region. We did speak with them, communicated with them, and we want to encourage them all to put in a similar uh, e, uh, EO. That's our goal. I mean, we had, we, we had 164,000, almost 165,000 people who have come here, 57% of we have been able to get uh, stabilized because of the job that this team is doing. And so uh, Governor Abbott and the bus companies need to coordinate to make sure we could use our manpower correctly, make sure we could have the space correctly, and do it in an organized time frame uh, that we could do it correctly so we don't have disorder in our city. And Katie, I would just add again, to the point that the mayor made, we were in contact with officials in both New Jersey and in New York State and the surrounding counties before the EO was issued, specifically because we knew what he did in Chicago. So we wanted to make sure that did not happen. So that's why the mayor has been very clear. Every town, every county, on a Metro North line, on a New Jersey Transit line, should be issuing a similar EO right now. So to stop uh, Abbott from uh, using uh, migrants as political pawns again. And have you spoken to these? I mean, I we, we've really spoken to, no, we've are. spoken, no, no, that's the one that's already issued. Yes, we, we spoke to a number of counties uh, and towns in Jersey and in New York State, both right around here and even upstate. So make sure that if he wants to go to Albany, for example, that we are ready for that. And the one that... The one that was We've issued. Spoken to a bunch. <laughs> the one that was issued, he didn't. Re he doesn't realize it, but he joined our team. We want everyone else to do what he's doing. So he, he, he blames, uh, uh, me that he's issuing the EO. And actually, you know, he can blame me as much as he wants. Just get more EOs. Call others to do it as well. And Katie, sometimes people don't realize the magnitude or the scale of what's about to hit them until it hits them. <laughs> so now that we've issued our EO and the other states have been impacted by it, maybe they'll understand the magnitude and the scale and they will join with us. Hi, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Good. So two questions. First, then, is it is it fair to say that the, the goal of the EO is to spark a like large web of similar EOs across the region in a way that will somehow ultimately stifle the Abbott busing? Is that the idea? And do you plan to also seek an EO that would apply to planes coming through the Port Authority and you know whatever other means of transportation people use? And then the second question is, um, you've talked a lot about how you know average New Yorkers seem not to understand that you can't just deport Migrants, if you could deport them, would you? Okay, so let me peel back each each level. Um, one, the the goal of the EO is to coordinate people coming to our city, so we could utilize our manpower better, so that we could utilize uh, how to uh, have spaces for people. So that's the goal. The goal is not to have this uh, cascade of EOs go out. That's a byproduct. The goal is to coordinate um, so that I don't wake Deputy Mayor Williams Isom up at 3 in the morning saying, hey, a bus was just dropped off uh, at a location in the Bronx somewhere. So that's the goal. Uh, the second is that what, I ex what people didn't understand, uh, what are my, uh, my abilities? And so when I talk about the list of things, it's because people came to me and say, hey, why don't you deport people? I don't have that authority. <laughs> the federal government has that authority. Why don't you stop the buses from coming in? I don't have that authority. So my goal is to answer the questions that people are giving to me, that everyday New Yorkers have been given to me, and some of them are very knowledgeable but not aware of what are my authority. So now, would I deport or not? I'm not going to respond in hypothetical. Uh, if, if you do something that's harmful to the city, 
uh, repeatedly, I don't think you should be in our city. Our city should be a place for safety. It should be a place for those who appreciate being part of the American experience. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, how are you? How are you? Good. Um, Serving back to you, meeting with Governor Murphy um, in the coming days of today. Um, so, Governor Murphy and a growing number of New Jersey towns are saying they're not going to welcome migrants. So, aside from this executive order, what will you ask them to do? And you know, why hasn't this united coalition been created prior to this? Because now we seem like we're in this whack-a-mole situation of going to different train stations and there's no executive orders. And just to circle back with Fabian saying that the you guys have been in contact with. Um, all these towns. Was it before or after the executive order was issued? Before. You just said before. Yes. With the, uh, and and with the before or after, but before. But coming in back to, is this, are you looking to expand the executive order even further as building off of what Dan was asking? In debt, I mean, in um, Chicago already, they're bypassing the executive order by sending people on planes. So what power does the city have and what are you exploring to do? And, and that is so important because New Yorkers have continuously asked uh, you know, why is this happening to us? And, you know, people have said, hey, I'm a mayor, why are you allowing them to do this to us? And that's why we're on this important communication and education to let New Yorkers know, um, you know, I'm angry, they're angry, and where we need to have the anger pointed to, because they didn't know. I mean, this is so new to everyday people watching their city being consumed like this. And our goal is to educate <coughs> New Yorkers where your anger should be pointed to and how we're going to use everything within our powers uh, to make sure that we, if there's things we could do to stop planes, like I said, there was a plane that was diverted uh, to Philadelphia because of smog. What was coming here? And so those who, like uh, Governor Abbott, who want, they want to do things that are disruptive, they're finding different ways to do it. So we have to find different ways to stop them and fight on behalf of, this, of, of the city. So Hold on, let, let me finish. Go ahead. Are you going to looking to expand the EO to cover things like plans? And what are you going to ask Governor Murphy to do? Like, what can New Jersey do to help? Let me just jump in here. Mm -hmm. We are exploring, together with our partners, every legal option. And I think that's all we can say at this time. You use the word whack-a-mole, I use the word bonkers. <laughs> Maybe another way to say it is wake up federal government. Because it should not be, people. There, there are people's lives at stake here. And to use the term whack-a-mole, which is what the state of Texas is looking to do, um, doesn't that just feel weird and out of alignment when we're talking about families with children? It, it, it's just like, like, just pause for a moment on that. Um, but as New Yorkers, we're not going to take this lying down. We are going to continue to pursue and consider every legal option to maintain order and our ability to manage a humanitarian crisis. Um, happy New Year, Mr. Mayor. Happy New Year to you. Um, I wanted to ask about um, New Jersey and just in general, this idea that you've called for, which is a decompression strategy. Now, the governor of New Jersey last year rejected the idea of creating an emergency shelter in Atlantic City. You know, given what's happening now, are you disappointed that he's not stepping up in this way to accept some migrants? And I wanted to also ask if there was an update on the outcomes of migrants who went upstate and whether you would like to ask the governor if she would do more in that regard, and whether that's another option, which you did, you know, last year, or, you know, which is relocating some people to other parts of the state who might need jobs. And, and, and you said the magic uh, term, who may need jobs. That's why we've been fighting for allowing people to work. And, um, when I look at any municipality, and we have many communications, we've had a, a, a great deal of communication with our colleagues across the state, and they said, Eric, we don't have a problem with taking migrants and asylum seekers. We just want them to be able to work. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, you know, I'm not angry at the governor who is saying, let's let people work. We're all saying the same thing. You know, the, the challenge of this policy, which I think is just so uh, anti-American, 
We allowed the Ukrainian citizens who came here, we allowed them to work. Uh, we allowed our immigrants community to come here, we allowed them to work. This is so anti-American. And if we don't get to the corner of this, okay, we, you can keep expanding this, but it's not sustainable. And we want to go to fix the problem. While we are dealing with what Governor Abbott is doing, we want a strategy of dealing with the court strategy of the entire right to shelter. That's why we're in court tomorrow. We want to deal with a strategy of how do we get people to be self-sustaining, as what Deputy Mayor Williams Isom is doing. But we also need a federal strategy to slow this down. We got to turn off the faucet, you know. So um, uh, Governor Murphy is, I'm sure if we had people the right to work, he'll be more than willing to accept uh, people into the, uh, the state of New Jersey. I would like to just, um, hi, Liz, Happy New Year. I have a cold. Everybody, make sure to test yourself and to, you know, COVID and flu is going around, so make sure that everybody stays well. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about uh, Governor Hochul. So I think, yes, the folks that have been resettled upstate are doing well. And we have, from the very beginning, talked about needing to really resettle 1,250 families upstate. I think thus far, Camille, it's been about 80 families who have moved that are waiting to move up. It's, that's a problem because we can't be the only one that have to be on demand and provide shelter and do everything with um, the mandates that we have right now. And so it, I think it would help a lot if there was some way that the state could expedite that, even moving people up who are eligible until they find the housing. I, um, you know, I understand that it's a challenge, but I think all of us have to be in this together. What exactly is the holdup that you're told? You want to, Camille? Yeah, I, I think you'd have to ask the state, and I would encourage you to do that. But, you know, we have clearly created the pipeline that is necessary. They gave us criteria. They said that individuals needed to have completed their asylum application. Again, there are 300 families that are ready and willing to go upstate, um, even if they need additional assistance. It's not assistance that, that any other county, any other city could not provide. What we're doing here is not unique. We're going to do year. the last one so we can wrap it up, and then just, and, um, if you have anything yeah. There are a few questions to the mayor about New Jersey. And I want to publicly thank the uh, authorities in New Jersey who all weekend and since we entered our executive order uh, and since before we entered the executive order have been coordinating and completely cooperative with the city of New York, and it is greatly appreciated. Um, so, quick question about the Gowanus Emergency Shelter at 103 Third Street. Um, just wanted to be clear that the administration was aware that the site itself was being investigated by the DEC for soil vapor intrusion. Um, and if that's the case, why make that decision? And lastly, are there any plans to either move migrants or? find a new shelter if it's found that the air has contamination that's above the state standards. Uh, um, um, Anna, I, yeah, you could start and I'll finish. So I, that shelter, from my understand, I don't know if it was particularly for migrants, I have to look back at my notes, but it would go through the regular process, all the regulatory um, uh, precautions that we would need to, including an environmental one, and if it was not fit for people being sheltering there, we would not have people there. Yeah, I was just and essentially saying that's the, the requirements we have with all of our regulatory agencies. They have to, all of the centers have to go through the checklist to ensure that it's habitable. And if it's not, then we take it off the list. Okay, thank you. Thank you.